Yes, yeah, so sexologist. What is a sexologist? People always ask me, does that mean you have a lot of sex? And <laughs> I say yes, but that's not why I get to call myself a sexologist. <laughs> so, um, a sexologist is actually the scientific study of human sexual behavior. It, I went about it by getting a Bachelor of Arts degree in sexuality, marriage and family, a master's degree in human sexual education, and I'm doing my PhD now in human sexual education. When I'm done, I will be the only person in the world with all three of my degrees in sex, which is super fun. Um, what I do with my expertise in the world is I run a female-oriented feminist sex shop in Westchester called Feminique. I was the name of my business. Um, I also do events like this. I also do private kind of grassroots sex education in kind of fun ways. And then I, I write a blog. And I just, ta-da, uh, wrote a book, which is coming out on November 6th. And so this workshop is going to deal a little bit about some of the issues that I faced in my career becoming a sexologist and the oppression that I felt from society coming down on me and kind of what I call it is the crusade against sex, which is the title of the book and fighting the crusade against sex, where every level um, of society from institutions big and small, there is a kind of systematic um, anti-sex movement. So what I'm going to try and have us do today is talk a little bit about my personal story, um, get you to think about maybe ways that you've been sexually oppressed and maybe ways that you've been a sexual oppressor, what that means for you, what that means for us as a society, um, where that history of oppression comes from, and maybe how we can stop doing it. So that's kind of where I'm trying to go. This is my first time teaching this. I've actually designed this workshop just for this event. Normally I have kind of a catalog of like six events that people will pick which one they want. Um, but I had yet to do one on politics and when the political science club approached me, I designed one special for you. So again, kind of work with me if I'm not as quick-witted as I usually am. And if it works out, well, I'll pick your brains at the end of what you thought, maybe advice for how I can work it better next time. I might include it in my, my catalog. So let me know what you think. Honest feedback is greatly appreciated. Um, so before I get too much into my personal experiences. Um, like I mentioned, I actually went to college to study sexuality. Um, to do that, I had to actually go to a foreign country because step one of the crusade is that this country does not offer degrees in sexuality. Um, you can't get that education. You are denied that education at the undergraduate level in this country. Um, when I returned, um, I could not find a job. There is nobody hiring sexologists. That the crusade continues. So I started my own company, and that's what I'm doing here. In order to get um, start the company, um, every step of the way was also met with this sexual oppression. Um, I was not able to get a business permit at first. I had to get a lawyer and fight that in court. I was not able to get a credit card processing machine. You ever go into a store and you give them a credit card? Well, that, that uh, store clerk had to go through a whole process to get that system set up. When I signed a contract to do that with the bank, they, they said, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't realize, we just looked at your website, you're an adult entertainer, and we can't do business with you. I tried to advertise my business, newspapers wouldn't run my ads, magazines wouldn't run my ad, Little Clipper magazine wouldn't run my ad, Facebook took down my ad and said it was, quote, abusive. This is the crusade, this is the oppression. So finally, I went through all of these kind of hurdles, and opened the store, and I don't know if you were around in 2008 when Feminine uh, came to be established as a sex shop and education center here in town. Um, I actually was then sued by a local church and was used as a political platform from a gentleman running for office in, uh, for state representative in this district who actually uh, made this his political campaign issue, like vote for me and we'll get rid of the sex shop. So we're going to talk a little bit about that experience, but before I do that, I want to kind of have you reflect on your own experiences for a second. And I'm going to have you walk around, because I can only take so much of people staring at me. I like to hear from you and have you up and moving and sharing your thoughts. So I have two lines up here. Um, one is a continuum from totally interested to totally uninterested. And the bottom line is from legal and unregulated to illegal and punishable by jail. I'm going to give each person counted out, maybe two or three different scenarios. Um, 
you're going to take the one scenario, and I'm going to give you a piece of tape, and you're going to place it how you personally feel. And I know this is kind of public, so feel free to like lie if you're feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> but because um, I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable. But um, where are you? Your personal interest, how do you feel? So for example, one of them is walking around in your own house naked. You're someone who's like, not for me, don't really want to walk in my house naked, or you in the middle, or you're like, oh yeah, if I'm in my house, <laughs> better close the blinds. Um, <laughs> or, and then the second time you're going to put the card up, now, separate from your personal preference, where do you think, in your opinion, this should fall as far as governance and le le legislation is concerned? Should be walking around in your living room naked, be totally legal, or somewhere in between, or completely illegal and actually punishable by jail if you're found to be in your own house naked. Your own opinion, how you feel about it, how you think the government should handle it. So I'm going to have you come up here. I'm just going to take a little finagling because I got piles of papers here. Come on, don't be shy. I will participate as well. There's some tape if you can grab one of those. So the yellow card is the top, how you feel. Sorry. The blue card is the bottom, where you Um, have to be, like, are we fixing them? You are fixing them. There's some tape to fix uh, those. 